Hello, uh, my name is Fern. I'm known as Hey Vern on the Anime Studio Forum. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a brief tutorial about uh, the timeline view and, ch and channel view in the new Anime Studio 6. There's a few little changes made uh, from the last version in regards to how uh, channels are displayed in the timeline. In the previous version, if you're familiar with it, there was a display pop-up where you had a whole bunch of channels that you could you could turn on and off to view them in the timeline. Um, I found this to be problematic in that if you didn't turn them all on and you had a keyframe on one of those channels that wasn't visible, you didn't know you had a keyframe there. So you couldn't see if it, if it was keyed or not. So generally I would just keep all the channels turned on all the time so I could always see if there was a keyframe. Um, in the new version, in version 6, <coughs> all the channels are visible all the time, but only if they have a keyframe. So I have a simple little bone skeleton here. And uh, so let's say we go to hit frame 12, and I'm going to rotate one of these bones. I'll rotate the, what I call a bicep bone here. So in frame 12, it animates from frame 0 to frame 12. And then we go to frame 24, and I'm going to rotate the elbow. And then I'll go to frame 48 and rotate the body here. Okay, so we have three bones. Now you notice what happened. As I rotated those bones, two things happened. First, the, uh, the entire bone angle channel became visible immediately when I rotated the first bone. The second thing that happened was the bone that I rotated. There's a this this icon here represents the bone, the selected bone an, uh, angle channel. So any bone that's been rotated has that red animated angle channel visible. Now the hand bone here, this bone, does not have that. The the, the selected bone angle is not visible. That channel is not there. And any other bone that was not rotated has no channel. And quite frankly, I, I kind of like this because now I can see that this bone's not been rotated. In a previous version, if I had the selected bone channel visible, it was always there. Um, and I could look at it and see that there weren't keyframes on it, but it was always there. Um, this way, you can see immediately whether a bone has a key or not. Just by clicking on it, instantly that, that channel pops up. You can see that there's no channel, and then boom, there you can see it. Uh, and I know I've got keys on it. And this can be helpful too, because supposing I didn't want that bone keyed and I turn it on, hey, it's got a key, but it's way off down at the end of the animation. I know it's got a key in there and I should get rid of it if I needed to. Um, that's a minor thing, but it's helpful. So, let's say on frame 48, I don't want this bone to start animating until frame 36. So what do I do? Well, I can go over here, I can copy this frame from frame 0 and paste it and now boom I've got a hold frame. Well then I realize well wait I, I want all these other bones to have a hold frame on frame 36 or maybe I want this bone and 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 this bone to have hold frames but none of the others. Well I have a couple of options or maybe these bones would have a hold on frame 42 instead. So there's a there's a different ways you can handle it. In the, in this case, if I wanted the legs to have a hold on frame 36 and the feet and, and everything, I go there. I get the rotate bone tool. I click it, and now you'll see that all these bones now have a channel in the selected bone channel for the angle. I'm done. I could have done the same thing on 36. Another trick would be this. If you if you already rotated a bone, and here I already had this hold key for this bone right here. And I already have that on frame 36. Supposing I wanted to have the hold key for these other bones also on frame 36. Well, I already have that selected bone channel visible for frame 36. I keep it selected and I just select additional bones to go along with it. Hey, we're going to have to do this anyway. Um, you have to select the bones anyway, and now the channel is visible because this bone's already been keyed and it's visible. So I can just right click it and say add key, and now I've added a keyframe to all the selected bones. 
and this is pretty much exactly the way I worked it with 5.6 um, all the channels were visible the only difference is with I could select bones that weren't keyed and I could just right click on the selected bone channel now there's just one tiny little extra step and that's selecting them and and keying the, the channel either with the tool or selecting another bone that's already got a key or, or whatever but it's it's a split second and it's a minor change with great benefits because now the timeline view is so much more compact and once you've keyed that channel that channel's visible for all the bones that was another thing I did to, to avoid all this hassle to avoid having to worry about the, you just key all the channels that you plan to use if you know you're going to use those channels down the road or down further down the animation then you just key them I've selected all all the bones here I'm going to start from scratch let's get rid of all the keys no keys selected all the bones I get the rotate bone tool boom all the bones have a key done don't have to worry about it okay so now what about the translation uh, the only difference here is that uh, the translate uh, bone tool doesn't work exactly like the angle tool so let's say I select all and I click with the translate bone tool I get I get the keyframe here for the selected bone channel but the only bone that got keyed is the top bone of the chain and so let's say I select all these uh, the leg bone and I do the same thing I just click I click here so now what's happened is only this top bone of the chain has been keyed. It's not that big a deal. You select all the bones, you use the bone translation tool, boom, it's clicked, you got the channel, and you just say add keyframe. Just like you did with the angle bone, and bang, all your keys. All your bones now have a channel. And you can do the same thing for everything. Get the scale tool, click, boom, you got a channel, right click, add keyframe. Now you're only going to do this once. Or you're only going to do this for every every bone. Once every bone has a key that you're planning to use, that channel is visible for the whole animation. You don't have to worry about it. So right now, with just a few seconds, I've got channels visible for every single channel for every single bone. I'm done. So in conclusion, I think that uh, this new feature is great. I, I think it uh, helps clear up some of the clutter in the timeline. Um, channels are, are much more interactive uh, and easier to view uh, you don't have to keep turning them on and off to save space or, or to, to view channels that you might have keyframed etc etc uh, I hope this helped you out uh, and I look forward to doing more tutorials see you next time thanks